the accuracy of analysis of an oil sample is greatly influenced by two aspects of the whole procedure that the customer controls how the sample is taken and the information accompanying the sample. The latter has been dealt with in our video filling out a wear check subform. This video will focus on the correct sampling procedure to follow when extracting an oil sample. It must be emphasized that an oil analysis program is only as strong as the oil sampling program. The importance of correct sampling procedure. The taking of an oil sample is where the whole process starts. It is vitally important that the sample is taken correctly. If the oil sample is not representative of the oil that is in the machine, then the results will not reflect the true picture of what is going on inside the component. The end result will be an incorrect diagnosis based upon an inaccurate analysis because of a poorly taken sample. There are two things that can go wrong with taking an oil sample. The first error, and the most common one, that can occur is the sample is contaminated with foreign debris during its extraction. An example of this is getting dirt into the sample while extracting it. We call this error data disturbance. The second error is that the sample taken is not representative of what is going on inside the machine. A sample taken from a filter is a common example of this. The data density of the sample has been exaggerated doing this. Another common error is taking a sample from the tank in a hydraulic system. Here the oil has already been through the return line filters and any debris from the system has already been removed. Here the data density of the sample has been reduced by the filter. The objectives of a good sampling procedure are to maximize data density and minimize data disturbance. Maximizing data density Samples should be taken in such a way that there is the correct amount of information per milliliter of oil as is possible. The oil sample should be extracted in such a way that the concentration of information is uniform and representative. The procedure must be consistent from sample to sample. Minimizing data disturbance. Data disturbance refers to interference associated with gathering, preparing and analyzing an oil sample. Taking samples from a machine that is not running, where the oil is not hot or well mixed, is a common source of data disturbance. Another example of data disturbance is the cleaning of sampling equipment and bottles with diesel or solvents. We use the analogy that taking an oil sample from a machine is like a doctor taking a blood sample from a person. Cleanliness is key. If you are having a blood sample taken, you would expect a sterile wipe and a clean syringe and needle. Likewise, your machine expects the same. There are three main ways to take a sample. From the drain plug, with a sampling pump, using a sampling valve. Drain plug and sampling pump samples account for the vast majority of samples received by the laboratory. And whilst you can get excellent samples using either of these two methods, there are also many shortcuts that can be taken. And human nature, being what it is, means that if a shortcut can be taken and there is a good chance it won't be discovered, then that shortcut will be taken. The preferred method for taking a sample is via the sampling valve. However, this is not always a practical method. So, in setting up a sampling program, one should ensure that no matter what method is used, it may be carried out as efficiently as possible. Before we examine these three methods of taking a sample in more detail, first a couple of words on the sample bottle. The sample bottles are made of plastic, obviously, and plastic has electrostatic properties, so does dirt. The sample bottles are made in clean room conditions. The moment a sample bottle gets opened, the inside of the bottle is exposed to the atmosphere and all the airborne contaminants that it contains. It is thus vitally important that the sample bottle remains closed right up until it gets used, is opened only long enough to get the oil in and thereafter is sealed as soon as possible. Don't fill the bottle right to the brim when taking the sample. Just fill to the level of the top of the label or the bottom of the thread. The reason for this is that when the sample gets to the laboratory, it gets agitated in a paint shaker to mix the oil properly. If there is no air gap in the sample bottle, it does not get agitated sufficiently. Don't over tighten the bottle when sealing it closed. If the oil is really hot, it may make the plastic slightly soft. Just tighten the lid with moderate pressure and when the bottle is cool, you can check the seal again. In this video, we will examine each of these methods in more detail. Drain plug sampling. Drain plug sampling is the least preferred method 
as there is a good chance that the dirt and debris either around the outside of the plug or at the bottom of the sump may find its way into the bottle, making results appear worse than they actually are. To take a good drain sample, one needs a strong brush with either plastic or metal bristles, a rag and a clean white paper towel. It's also a good idea to write whatever information you need to on the bottle label, as once this label has oil on it, it becomes almost impossible to write on. The first issue with drain plug sampling, and this applies to the sample pump method as well, is the limited window of time which exists to extract the sample off the shutdown of the component. Once a component is shut down, dirt, water and wear metal contaminants start to sink to the bottom of the sump. Studies have shown that the maximum time to get an excellent sample varies from 15 to 30 minutes after shutdown. Thereafter, the integrity of the sample becomes compromised. So make sure that the oil is at operating temperature or at least well mixed. If the component has been standing for a significant period, start it up and operate it for a few minutes to get the oil warm and mixed. This might mean taking it for a drive around the workshop a couple of times. Have a clean area around you where you can put your sampling tools. Scrub the area around the plug thoroughly with a wire or plastic brush to remove loose dirt, rust and other debris. Wipe off with clean paper towel, not a rag. This is similar to the sterile wipe that the doctor uses before taking the blood sample. Paper towels are preferred to rags for a couple of reasons. Firstly, rags are usually dark in color, which makes it more difficult to see residual dirt on them. And secondly, rags can leave fibers behind. A bunch of these fibers getting into the sample bottle could be interpreted as a collapsing filter. Make sure the paper towel is absolutely clean after finishing wiping around the drain plug. Open the drain plug and let several liters of oil out. Please do not collect the first little bit of oil that comes out of the drain. Drain points in sumps are engineered to collect dirt, water and other contaminants that may have gotten into the system. So the first oil that comes out will be naturally heavily contaminated. Wrap the sample bottle with a rag, just leaving the lid exposed. Hold the rag to manage the bottle. This will firstly prevent too much oil from dirtying the outside of the bottle and is also protection from hot oil getting onto the hands. Open the sample bottle. Collect some oil directly from the oil stream until the bottle is filled to the top of the label and then close the bottle immediately. Do not use an intermediate container to catch the oil. A styrofoam coffee cup or an empty coke bottle that have been lying around open are contaminant magnets. Just take the oil sample directly into the sample bottle. It does not matter to the laboratory if there is a bit of oil on the outside of the bottle. Dispose of any waste oil and tissues in an environmentally sound manner. And if you have done all of that, you have taken an excellent drain sample. Sample Extraction Pump A much cleaner, safer and easier way of taking a sample is by using a sample extraction pump. The extraction pump is a simple and low-cost way to draw a sample of oil and the same pump can be used to sample different components. Just like you expect your doctor to use a new needle when taking a blood sample, your machine expects the same. It is imperative that you use a new tube for every single sample. Please do not try to wash and reuse sampling tubes. Yes, a needle can be sterilized and reused, but the risk of it not being done correctly is just too great. The same with the tubes. To take an oil sample using this method, you will need a new, clean piece of tube cut to the correct length, a closed sample bottle and a couple of clean rags. Prepare a clean area in the vicinity of the sampling. Put a rag down if the surfaces are dirty. Just a couple of words on the sample pump. Keep the O-rings in the barrel of the pump and on the bottle seal lubricated. A thin film of clean cooking oil works well. If the seals run dry, the pump won't work. They also need to be replaced occasionally. Make sure the dust cap on the SOS sample point at the front of the pump is fitted. Without it, the pump won't work either. If the pump does get filled with oil, and it does happen occasionally, just strip it and wipe it off with a rag. You can use paraffin or diesel too if you like. Just make sure all the excess is well wiped off. When inserting the sample tube into the pump, Loosen the knurled knob at the top of the pump and insert the tube through it. Push the tube through until it is just protruding through the base of the pump. 
If the tube is pushed through too far, it will get covered in oil and the pump will get contaminated when you remove the tube. Hold the pump horizontally when operating it, with the fitted sample bottle pointing straight down. Holding the pump at an angle can easily lead to it getting contaminated with oil. When you are using the pump, you will quickly discover that when you stop pumping, it does not mean that the oil stops flowing. The oil will continue to flow as long as there is a vacuum in the system. When the oil is at the correct level, there are two ways to break the vacuum. Either twist off the sample bottle or pop off the dust cap on the valve at the end of the pump. Some people leave the dust cap off the whole time and use their finger over the end of the valve to control the vacuum. As discussed before, cleanliness is imperative. When you give a blood sample, you, the doctor and everything around you don't get all covered in blood. Likewise, there is no reason to get everything all covered in oil when taking a sample. Once again, the 15 to 30 minute post shutdown window of opportunity to get oil samples applies. Insert the sump end of the tube halfway down into the oil. Keep the bottle capped right up until the point of threading it onto the pump. Fill the bottle no more than to the top of the label. Cap the bottle immediately after removing it from the pump. After taking the sample, discard the tube. Sampling valve. The sample valve is the most reliable method for taking a sample. It is easy, clean and simple and provides consistent and representative results as the machine has to be running for the valve to work and the sample will always be taken from the same location. Make sure that the oil is at operating temperature. This will ensure that the oil is well mixed. Remove the dust cover, clean the valve orifice and attach the connector. Allow a few milliliters of oil to drain into the rinse bottle in order to purge the sampling tube. Disconnect the rinse bottle and attach the sample bottle. Fill the sample bottle to about the three quarters level. We hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.